Hello and welcome to a simple tutorial on how to use CGEZ, a program I wrote, to automate the creation of CG Miner for script or Litecoin mining or Fairbricks, Tenebricks, whatever you're mining, barbecue coins, whatever you're mining with CG Miner for uh, using script, this thing will help you generate your .bat file on Windows. This will work on Mac and Linux, however CG Miner isn't even compiled for Mac, and on Linux, Linux and, and Mac, but Linux does not use .bat files, so there's really no reason to be using this program on anything but Windows, but since it is Java, it will run. So you need cgeasy.jar, which there is a link in the description below, or if you're seeing this on a form post, post there, post, it's in the form post somewhere. Anything I say is in the description is also in the form post. I'll also have a link to the CG Miner version. Uh, it's the direct link that Siklovas, I don't know how to pronounce his name, sorry, uh, that he has, or she, he or she has uh, provided um, it'll, or I'll also have the link to the form if you'd feel better downloading it from there. As well, I will be putting up a tutorial for those who don't feel comfortable or just don't want to or want to know how to do it. Uh, they don't want to run a, a pre-compiled jar from someone, which totally makes sense. Uh, jars can do many malicious things. Um, so if, you know, the person programmed them right, they can do things that are malicious, delete files and stuff. So if you don't want to run a jar I compiled, I will be providing a link to the source code um, for anyone who wants to just compile it themselves and read through it first to make sure it does what they want it to do or uh, you, I'll also have another tutorial on how to do it manually without the need of this program however this makes it easier for the beginning miner and uh, honestly 24 hours ago I would have appreciated this program existing um, so right click on your CG miner version it must be 2.6.1 or more recent maybe 2.6.0 works but 2.5.0, 2.4.3 those ones in back do not work. They do not have support for the script algorithm, which you do need. So just right click and click on extract here. If you have WinRAR, if you don't, right click and it'll be extract dot dot dot, and it's pretty straightforward from there how to extract it. CGEZ.jar has to be in this folder. It has to be in the same folder as CGMiner.exe. It looks for that when it runs. So this is an executable jar file, so we can double click and launch it. And it'll ask you what you want the background color to be. Now, in the average command prompt, uh, the background is black, the text is white. I'm going to choose a background of black and text of green. So, I want the bat file to be called launch.bat. I could leave off the dot .bat and it would work just fine. Either way, add dot .bat and the program is smart enough to not add dot .bat again, so it's not launch.bat.bat. Dot .bat. If you just put launch, it'll do launch.bat. So, that was a tongue tire, but you don't need to put .bat, it's optional. As well, this is another cool feature. I've programmed in most of the popular pools, Litecoin Pool, Litecoin Cash, Nusher, Coinatron, um, No Trollin, um, there was another really popular one, Xerius is, a whole lot of them are programmed in. I'll have a, li a full list of all the ones that are programmed in in the description slash form post. But for now, uh, just enter Litecoin Pool. We'll shortcut to HTTP colon slash slash Litecoin Pool dot org port 9332. Now, if you're doing something like solo mining, or one of your, or the pool you want to use is not one that's supported, maybe it's a private pool, maybe you're solo mining, whatever, uh, then it's not going to um, shortcut at all. You're going to have to type in the full address. Um, but it's helpful if either you don't know the full address or you just don't want to type it. Just type pool x, pool hyphen x, and it'll shortcut to HTTP colon slash slash pool hyphen x dot eu port a332, or I think this one uses 8080 by default, but enter the worker. Worker for me is workshulk.1. That is not uh, provided by this program. You have to go to the pool website, register an account, and make a worker. Most of you probably know how that works, especially if you've used something like Reaper or Script Miner GUI or one of the other programs, even Miner D. And press enter once you make sure everything's all right. And the password is one for me. Now, I'm not worried at all about giving out my Miner worker password and username because the worst anyone could ever do is mine for me, so I, I don't see a big risk involved with that at all. Uh, it'll ask for the GPU model. Now this is, I think, probably the feature, this is the feature that certainly took the most time and is probably the one that would make people want to use this program the most. You can type in whatever GPU you have and it'll, um, it'll, it has programmed into it over um, most of the, sh most of the modern GPUs. It has um, eight, all of the ATI GPUs. It doesn't have any NVIDIA. I don't think CG Miner works with NVIDIA. If it does, then I will add those later. But uh, it has most of the ATI cards. That's the 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000, 6000, 7000 uh, series 
GPUs for the desktop and the 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000, 6000, and 7000 mobile um, processor lines. So, you know, like a 7970M. So, if I had a 7970M, say I was on a laptop, I'd enter 7970M. Or for my computer, 5970, because that's the card I have. I could also put an ATI in front of it, uh, 5970. Uh, it, the capitalization does not matter at all, and that's not a 6, that's a 5. You didn't see that. Um, uh, the uh, capitalization does not matter because it converts it to lowercase before it looks for your GPU. It has many, many GPUs programmed into it. As well, if you can't find it, you can just Google how many shaders. If you enter a card it doesn't recognize, it'll, ask, it'll say, we didn't recognize your card, we don't know how many shaders it has. Uh, just type in how many shaders it has, and we'll use that number. So, this does still work for cards that aren't programmed in, however most of the cards you're going to be mining on are programmed into here. So, just going to press enter ATI 5970. I like that card. As well, if you don't know, you can go start control panel and device manager. And once that loads, close those. Under display adapters, it'll show the cards you have. This program does not support multiple GPU setups. Um, it'll run just fine. However, it uh, if you have, say, a 5830 and a 58 or a 5970, those have different amounts of shaders and it's only writing one basic configuration file in the future I may add support for multiple devices I don't know but uh, kinda not planning to unless people really want that feature um, I figure anyone who has multiple GPUs in a computer and is you know that interested in mining uh, probably knows how to configure CG Miner uh, themselves and don't need a program to do it for them however nice and easy it is so that's basically though, I have two 5900s, which mean, uh, means I have a 5970. If it's not very specific, like if it says 5800 series instead of 5870 or 5850, you may have to, 5830, whatever, you may have to look up your computer's model number or your computer's type or whatever, you know, look up uh, Dell, Optiplex, whatever it is, or, you know, um, whatever type your computer is and look at the specs and find out what video card it has. But in general, uh, this is a, at least a good starting point. Um, if you really don't want to look them up, you could always try all the different ones. Like if it said 5800 series, you could try 5830, 5850, 5870, and see which one works the best. But you probably want to just find out what card you have, so you know in the future as well. Close that. So the GP model on mine is an ATI 5970. I'm going to press enter. And aggression. From anyone who came from Reaper, they know aggression quite well. Uh, on Reaper, putting an aggression over 18 was almost a guaranteed crash. Anything between uh, or under 12, um, sometimes 13, made it so you could at least use your computer while it was running. Basically, the same thing applies to CG Miner. They call it intensity instead of aggression. However, I use the phrase aggression here. I find that to be a little bit more descriptive, but perhaps I'm wrong. I've been wrong before. So anyway, uh, type in whatever you want. It's a range from 1 to 20 that it allows. If you type something else, it will use that number. If you type in 28, it will set an intensity 28. However, CG Miner will not like that at all. So you can put others that are out of this range. However, that's the recommended range that I would use. So I'm going to put um, tw uh, 10 because since I'm filming, I do, don't want it to lag up my desktop. I do want it to work great. Um, again, 10 is very low. If you're trying to do any kind of serious mining, 10 is probably not going to cut it for you. If you just want to have it mining in the background while you're doing something, it's great. This tool does not support overclocking, uh, setting overclock settings or overvolt settings. However, if your card is overclocked, it will work perfectly fine with it. It just doesn't support setting um, CG Miner to automatically overclock your cards. That may be a feature I add. Feature I add in the future if anyone's interested in that. So uh, again, though, that's really easy to do within CG Miner once it's launched. So I'm going to choose 10. And work size, I find 256 works best for my 5970 in my limited testing here. However, uh, try all three and see which one gives you the best hashing rate. Again, let it run for a minute or two to get the full effect of the hashing rate that it's going to allow you, because uh, the first couple seconds, the hashing rate is not the final hashing rate of your card. Press enter, and it'll say config file written. If you press enter anymore, it'll just say you can close this window now. And so close it. Don't need that open anymore either. And you see I have launch.bat here. If I look at it, this is how it is. Color 02, that's the color setting. Uh, CG Miner, and all your information here. Uh, you can see I entered just Litecoin Pool and it shortcut to litecoinpool.org, port 9332 with the HTTP colon slash slash and the colon there. Um, has my worker name and my password. The amount of shaders, remember I entered, all I entered is ATI 5970 and looked up and found 
it looked in its little database and said, all right, it has 1,600 shaders. Intensity 10 I entered, work size 256 I entered. G1, that's threads per GPU. You probably don't want to mess with that. That's an automatic setting. However, you can go in here and edit it if you want. You can add anything else to this config you want too at this time. So you can use it to generate your prelim preliminary config and then if you have some other flag or something you want to use, just throw it in there and save. I'd recommend opening with Notepad, but some other programs will work. And I'm just going to double click launch.bat. So you can see I have the black background with the green text that I set up. And it's long activating long polling at the URL. It takes a minute to start up, not a big deal. And then you'll get to here. Now you can use the features here to do the overclocking and overvolting. As you can see, my hash rate is extremely low. Uh, even though it is just starting out, it's still going to be going to end up at a position that's extremely low. That is because I set intensity at only 10. Set it at something like 18, and you will see results. GPU my, uh, management, change settings. I can um, change settings for a GPU. Uh, I can change the engine and the memory. If, uh, just a little pro tip or whatever. If you are mining uh, Litecoins on a GPU, you will want to overclock, or and you, if you do want to overclock and overvolt, I recommend overclocking the engine and the memory. So I do uh, memory 1150 and engine 860 when I do Litecoin mining generally. Although, whatever works for you, again, a big focus is put on stability, because if you leave a miner running overnight and it only runs for an hour, then crashes, and it ran at 800 kill hashes, versus it running at 700 kilo hashes for 8 hours while you were asleep, well, the second one's a much better deal. Trust me. So, anyway, as you can see, it is accepting shares just fine. A little bit slow, again, because the very low intensity setting. This card could probably do... Well, I've been able to get this card to do about 800 kilo hashes before, so this is obviously quite low. This is, you know, um, one-fifth of its total capacity, probably. So now I'm just going to close that. Uh, you can call, again, you can call your uh, .bat file anything you want, uh, but it is going to end in .bat no matter what you do. Um, so any name will work, uh, but avoid special symbols or anything really weird like, you know, hearts and stars and stuff, those might not work. And uh, CG Easy, you can rename it if you want to change the name. It does have to be in the CG Miner folder, though it has to be uh, in the same folder as cgminer.exe because it looks for that when it boots up. It says is it in here? If yes, I'm going to allow them to make a configuration file. If not, no, because I don't want people making configuration files in another folder, then double-clicking it and being like, it doesn't open, it won't open. So if you do open CG Easy, which is the little catchy name I came up with while I was walking up the stairs, if you do double-click on it and it's not in the right folder, it'll say it appears you don't have this jar in your CG Miner folder. Please move the jar you just launched to the same directory that CG Miner is in. So that's where we just had it, that's where it still is, uh, the other copy of it. Uh, again, download link to cgeasy.jar and to uh, the download for CG Miner 261 or 2.6.1, Windows 32-bit version, will be in the description slash forum post. Uh, thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them either as a comment or a post, and I will try to help you. Uh, also, another thing to note is this uh, CG Miner, CG Easy does not support the Fire Pro cards or the really early cards from like 1995, 1996, 1997, those ones. It supports more of the modern ones. Uh, probably if you bought the laptop or desktop from 2007 on and it's not a workstation, so it doesn't have a Fire Pro series card, it should work just fine. I do plan on adding Fire Pro support if people want it, but it's kind of a lot of work if no one's going to use that feature. So thank you for joining me, and if you have any questions, again, leave them, feel free to leave them, and... Uh, the download links are in the description. Thank you.